Welcome to the fourth episode of the Trapper Stories. After finishing up everything with the moose, I needed to get back. I still had a decent amount of pine marten traps which I needed to get out. But unfortunately the weather was already very cold and windy and the forecast said it will get even colder and even more stormy. So I decided before I go back to bring out the rest of the pine marten traps, I first want to get to my Rieko trapping spot and set up my campsite site. Because setting up the campsite is always a very very long day of work and I don't get any break normally during that, so it's better to do it when the weather is not the worst. I left all my pine marten traps at the small cabin in the wilderness, which was about 25 kilometers from my main trapping spot away, where there was currently nothing. I still had four of my sledges in the forest, so I packed everything in my big sledge at my cabin and first started to drive to the four sledges which I had in the forest. I then hooked up everything again and headed to my final camp spot. <clears throat> and at that time of the year the snow was just powder soft. So actually I needed to drive two times with just half of the load. And I finally arrived at the a spot with everything at three o'clock and I had still a little bit of light. That was already pretty long as I started in the morning at eight o'clock so just getting to my other sledges and driving then everything to my final camp spot was over 80 kilometers of driving in difficult conditions and it took very long. A problem for me is that I have just um, these plastic sledges. And they are much worse than something we call Pachiriki here, which is like a big wooden sledge on a ski runners. And they are much better to transport heavy loads, especially in the soft powder snow. If I would have had such a Pachiriki, most likely I could have done that in one drive and then I would have saved like, I guess, two and a half hours. But I couldn't. So I arrived at three and started to set up camp. The first work which needs to be done is getting all the snow away from the ground as you can't really camp for a longer period of time on the snow as the snow starts melting and everything gets bumpy in the tent. Um, and um, also if it at some point melts in the middle completely it always stays on the side and you don't have an even ground. I marked the spot very very carefully with the GPS in summer to make sure that ground is mostly flat and I hit that flat spot pretty good again. I was just a little bit uh, too far on the side, so one bump came in and I partly compensated that as I shoveled more snow away on the other side. Um, but at some point uh, it got later and later, that whole snow shoveling at least took an hour. So I set up camp even if that bump was still um, on my tent space. You can see that bump on the picture um, it's on the upper corner, close to the upper corner. As you see, compared to my earlier trapper stories, I now made much more pictures and in the future also videos, so I have much more to show. It was not so cold, just minus 22, but um, the temperature dropped quite a lot in the following hours and we also had a lot of wind. So my fingers got freezing cold when I started to set up the tent frame. Um, it's a Russian tent and setting it up takes under good conditions two hours minimum uh, without staking it because the staking is normally done on the next day when I, uh, or you will need to make the stakes first and then you put them into the snow and they need to harden overnight. So somewhere at um, 7 o'clock I guess or I don't remember exactly, perhaps also th six. Uh, the tent was in a mainly done so far and I set up the stove inside. I still had the problem that I needed to drive to my firewood place where I prepared my firewood and get some firewood as there was no space in the sledges so far. So I needed to leave again with a, with a snowmobile to get the firewood and started and when I came back it was already like uh, half past seven and then I started to make a fire 
and I also basically started to cook something and that was the first meal of my day. I didn't eat anything so far because I didn't really found the time. I didn't have the patience because I wanted to have the tent set up and a fire going and when I would have just made a break during the day with this very chilling wind uh, there is a high risk uh, that I get too cold and not warm anymore so I only drank during the day and was not really eating anything it's also the excitement is always pretty high on that day when I set up the camp so I also don't really feel any hunger then on the next day the weather was just beautiful it got pretty cold in the morning it was minus 29 and the wind was really blowing uh, unpleasant but um, the nice sky was an excuse for that all. My plan was now to drive back to that small cabin again and continue with the pine marten trapping, as I only wanted to set up the camp here that I have my camp already. I didn't rush too far as yesterday's day was pretty exhausting, so I left. I, I packed my snowmobile at 9 o'clock and I left at 9.50. The drive to the small cabin was about 20 km air distance and it was very difficult. There were some very very tricky birch forests which were very thick and um, with some um, steep hills and a lot of big stones uh, and we didn't have such huge amounts of snow that it was each, that you could just drive over them. So the drive took about two and a half hours and I was super cold when I arrived and unfortunately I knew that that cabin is not really getting warm and I already missed my tent again <laughs> which is much more comfortable than that cabin. In the evening besides making some food I also started preparing the pine marten traps for the next day that I have as few to do in the forest as possible. Um, normally I don't really set them up a lot already but the weather was so cold and with the wind everything was so chilly that I want to minimize the time in the forest where I need to work with the bare hands. The next day was really cold and windy. Normally when we have such cold weather we don't have a lot of wind and the weather is calm. But for some reason the weather was cold and very very windy or nearly stormy. Otherwise it was a beautiful day, but my feet got pretty cold on the snowmobile, especially because on the soft powder snow I basically need to stand all the time. And when I'm standing the blood circulation in my feet is much worse. So that really got my feet cold and after two and a half hours bringing pine marten traps out I needed to make a break at the cabin to warm up my feet. So I got them all completely out of the shoes and put my feet over the um, stove to warm them up again. I then started on the second run and I really took care that my feet are really hot when I go into the shoes because that was a problem in the morning, they were already pretty cold and that helps a lot and makes a huge difference because then the blood circulation is better from the beginning on and they don't really get so cold. I did not find a lot of pine marten tracks, just very few, but I was not eager to search a lot, I just took some places where I thought it could work because a pine marten trapping is nevertheless not a big part of my trapping and not very important. At the end on my way back to the cabin suddenly <laughs> when I was in a small birch forest which surrounded a creek and the swamp from everywhere black grouses started <laughs> and that was very very impressive. I stopped and made a few pictures. Back at the cabin I cooked some simple lentils um, food with a little bit of mashed potato powder, uh, nothing special, um, and then I was pretty tired and was happy to sleep because on the next day I needed to have that awful drive back to my camp again through that difficult route, but at least there was a track now. And how that drive back and my first days of trapping at my campsite will be, you will hear in the next episode of the Trapper Stories. So thanks for tuning in and hopefully you'll hear me next time.